Welcome back. Now, a new report from Denmark suggests that many European governments may be in violation of the EU's own digital privacy laws. Mm. It looked into online trackers and found that more than 100 advertising companies were monitoring citizens without the knowledge. Rosie White and the Cube team have been looking into the reports. How often do you head online to check out a symptom of an illness that you might be experiencing? Well, more than likely, you might end up on your government-run health service website, uh, several of them here that we've pinpointed, and there you might ask intimate questions, and we know some of the questions you might ask online. It might be about your pregnancy. It might be, how do I terminate my pregnancy? Help, I have HIV. What's next? When you land on one of those pages, it's a website that you trust. We know that when we scroll through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, that there's a kind of relationship between us and the people that run those sites, that they're using our data. You don't expect the same when you land on a government-run website. Well, a new report from the Danish consultancy CookieBot has revealed actually that might not be the case. They have revealed that nearly 90%, 89% of EU member state websites had third-party ad tracking companies looking at what you're, you're, at you're searching online and harvesting the data. In total, 112 ad tracking companies working on government-run websites. In France alone, 52 companies operating on those websites. If we go a little bit closer in, it's this intimate data that they're collecting. In uh, France here, we see uh, 21 different companies were monitoring abortion services, search terms relating to that. In Germany, 60 63 companies monitoring a single web page on just maternity leave. But what does that actually mean? It's your data and a third party using these government websites is collecting it. Well, we spoke to one of the authors of the report, one, someone from CookieBot. This is Daniel Johnson. And he explained when they've got your data, what happens next? They collect this information uh, to build a profile, a very detailed description of who you are. And these data, they are very valuable. Uh, that's their main economy. That's why they're able to provide the services for free. Uh, and the data are sold to uh, all anybody who wants to buy them, really. Mostly to uh, advertisers who want to target ads to you. But it could also be uh, insurance companies, employers, anybody who can have an interest uh, in you in some way or the other. This professor of security engineering at Cambridge University, Ross Anderson, sums up the gravitas of this. 25 of the 28 EU states are breaking data protection laws, tracking on their own websites. Now, what's clear is they weren't aware that this third-party monitoring was even taking place. The European Data Rights Group sum it up. They say this report shows how pervasive and broken online ad tracking remains. It means when you click on those websites, you can't be sure of who's collecting your data and where it ends up. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Now back with me uh, to discuss this is Sam Wilkin uh, from MLEX and we've also got the MEPs Mariaccia and Peter with us as well. Uh, Sam, first of all to you, it's quite shocking this, isn't it? How have we not known this has been yeah. happening for quite a long time? It is. I mean, I mean, purely as a citizen and internet user, I find it quite unsettling and I think your reporter was exactly right when she said we expect this from any sort of free website, free commercial websites, but we don't expect it from something that's run by the government and something that can handle the most sensitive of personal data. And, you know, GDPR is very clear on this, that, you know, sensitive personal data are, are the most... Uh, are, are those that have to be protected the most closely. So, uh, yeah, you, you don't expect it at all. So, so something needs to change, clearly. Uh, clearly, the current rules aren't enough. What, what, what does need to change, Peter? But I, I would say... Uh, to talk about this issue before election time is not, not a good time. For me, it's a very big issue. The next business, what we have to deal is after the election in the new parliament, because it's a big issue, and, uh, and we need time also but, for but this. Isn't the point this but right. the point is this is happening now, though. Yeah. Of course, no time to lose. Uh, I think that we have to, one, <laughs> look good. at whether these governments have actually respected the existing mm. laws, and I have a lot of questions mm. about that. So I think data protection officers have to look at that and legal experts have to look at whether they comply with the general data protection regulation. But secondly, and this is perhaps more important, this is an area where you would hope that governments also in their own actions would be setting an example would be showing that the public interest comes first and that they show that people can surf and search 
online without being tracked. And so I really hope that this research is a wake-up call because I fear that perhaps some of this is caused by a lack of knowledge of how different elements of websites put together sort of enhance the ability to track people's data. But, is, but, but, is we, have, but we have to ask. The, 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 very interesting to say we should not lose any time. But the, the other thing is we should also talk about have is a right law and order or should we also change on this? Sure. And this, and this need time, then I think the member states are find some gaps maybe and they say, OK. But also, I, but also I, I Sam, isn't this also about... There has to be a relationship between the state sector yeah. um, and private companies at the same mm. time. Mm. And it's not necessarily bad that the state can share information with private companies. In, no, in, in certain circumstances, that's absolutely fine, but this is clearly not one of those circumstances. And, you know, as Maricha said, uh, you know, perhaps the state should be setting an example and going above and beyond pure compliance with the GDPR and actually thinking, what are we doing here? Are we comfortable with it? Now, from a purely sort of regulatory enforcement point of view, the GDPR is, is a very broad framework and it doesn't deal with individual uh, cases like this. It doesn't even deal with the issue of internet tracking cookies per se, it's technology neutral. So what we need is, is more laws and, you know, the, the updated e-privacy directive, for example, will give much clearer guidance on, on so, tracking cookies. So maybe more regulation is needed, but as Peter pointed out, it'll probably not come until